Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome and if you are subscribed, um, please make sure that you have your notifications turned on by clicking the bell somewhere on the screen. Now this video is going to be about um, what is in my shower dash bathroom. Um, most of the items that I have been using have been recommended by a dermatologist who actually has her own YouTube channel and her name is Dr. Dre. I will make sure to link uh, her channel somewhere also um, below in the description box. So I'm going to go ahead and start with hair products since this is primarily a hair channel. I'm going to start with um, shampoos that I use. So uh, there are a few like go-to shampoos that I typically do use. However, um, I try to, whenever I have the, the chance, I try to try new shampoos to see if they're effective. Um, if you are new to the channel, I am the type of individual who likes to use more natural products, so products that are sulfate-free, alcohol-free, fragrance-free for the most part, or um, artificial fragrance-free, even though I do understand that all fragrance or any fragrance can still irritate and or cause irritation over time. So now getting to the bulk of the video. So the first shampoo that I'm going to be reviewing is the one that I've been using most frequently and it's called, it's by the Seaweed brand, or sorry, it's called the Seaweed Bath Company and it's Balancing Argon Shampoo for normal to oily hair. Um, it's nutrient rich with seaweed and um, is the purpose of the shampoo is to give a stronger, healthier appearance to the hair. It has um, aloe vera, it has argan oil, it has vitamin E and provitamin B5 as well as essential oils. Now there's recently been a bit of controversy around essential oils. I know that a lot of um, beauty gurus, even just cosmetic companies have been using essential oils in their products um, and like I said, quoted or you know derived from the dermatologist that I've been watching she suggests not to stay away from essential oils used on the face directly on the face or hair because it can actually um, irritate the skin as well however um, I really really like this shampoo because it's really light um, it's really natural it does not dry the hair out or like cause dandruff to accumulate over time which is pretty amazing and it smells really good it does have fragrance in it um, essential oil so it does smell really nice really refreshing and um, when you use it on your scalp it feels like it gives like a cooling feeling I believe that it has eucalyptus and tea tree in it so it gives um, some um, what do you call it? It gives some like relief for those people who may have drier scalps. So um, if you do have a dry scalp, this would probably be a good solution for you. So I'll go ahead and set that aside and pick up another shampoo. Now I have only used this shampoo maybe a max amount of like five times. And the reason for that is because it does have tea tree in it. Um, usually I do go with this brand, however, because it is I think it's a 100% vegan and cruelty free so that is why I typically go with this brand however um, because this particular shampoo has tea tree in it I have steered away for it, from it unless I have um, unless I'm having like a really dry scalp or I'm having like excess dandruff um, buildup so really good brand to go after it's called nature's gate and um, just going into the details, I was ready to put it down pretty quickly, but just to go into the details, it's soy free, vegan, gluten free, and paraben free. Um, looking at the ingredients, I see like um, a large concentration of glycerin, which is an ingredient that is a moisturizer, or it's um, an alcohol, I think, based type moisturizer that when added to beauty products um, can attract uh, moisture to the skin. Where, wherever it is applied and I will get more information on that and make sure that it's accurate and we'll list references references down below in the description box um, just kind of briefly going more it's got witch hazel which is good for for the skin ir um, skin irritation sorry about that we are back in action um, my battery died and I was not able to finish the video however here I am with half wet hair back trying to finish so going back to what we were already discussing, 
Um, the Nature's Gate shampoo does have some good um, ingredients that have been shown to improve like moisturization of the scalp such as the, the glycerin um, and as you know ingredients that are listed more like at the top of the, the ingredients list are um, have a higher volume uh, within the product and then those that are listed last are, um, have, are less, less concentration or less product in. <laughs> that makes any sense. Okay, so that's it for this one. Before my camera decides to cut out again, this is my all-time favorite brand for hair. It's called Acure. Um, they have shampoos, conditioners, skin products. Uh, they may even have like serums and who knows, they may even have makeup. They keep adding to their to their product list. But when I first tried out their um, products, it was a shampoo and conditioner. And before, I think it was like the almond moisturization one. I don't know if it's the same formulation, but it's the same color that they designated before. So it smells the same also, but now they're calling it the argon oil and pumpkin conditioner. And they also have the shampoo that goes for this. I haven't tried the shampoo yet, but I really like um, this pumpkin argan oil conditioner. Every time I use it, it leaves my hair really, really smooth and um, like really lightweight, which I love. I hate it when I use a conditioner that's still really moisturizing, but is a little bit more on the heavy side and I end up with like, you know, all of this excess um, product just kind of sitting on my hair. And when that happens, that can actually cause more sebum buildup on your scalp. So try to avoid um, products that are a little bit too thick. Sometimes that can even occur like with hair masks. So just, just be forewarned. However, what I really do love about this product is it's like free of most of those um, ingredients that are gonna be harsh on the skin. It does still contain fragrance, which is a little bit off-putting. However, I feel like almost every hair product contains some amount of fragrance. So I'll be on the lookout for some that don't, but just so you do know, this one does contain fragrance. And um, just so you guys know a little bit more about the intended purpose of this product, it's a conditioner that is formulated for dry, damaged, and curly hair. I have wavy hair-ish, as you can tell, so uh, I don't know, I guess that means I can use it, I don't know. It's vegan, sulfate-free, paraben-free, and cruelty-free. So we love cruelty-free products. Yay, awesome. So if you haven't, make sure that you go either to Sprouts, Whole Foods, Target. I believe they all carry this product. I don't know if you can guide it. Yeah. So there's just a quick um, up-close look. Now, I forgot to mention this product. I actually, it's near empty, but this is... One of those products that's more on the heavy side, but I almost don't mind it because I've never really had issues using this shampoo. It does contain fragrance, and I believe it contains like a little, quite, to me, it's a little bit strong of a fragrance, but it's by Ren Pure Originals. It's the coconut cream one. There are different shampoos and conditioners, so make sure that if you are interested in purchasing this product, you know that it is the coconut cream shampoo and conditioner. The conditioner I like, but I stuck more to the shampoo than I did the conditioner. Just, I'm not even gonna lie, putting it out there. And then um, this product claims to be sulfate-free, paraben-free, dye-free, which I love, gluten-free, I don't know what gluten-free does for hair products or not, maybe those people who are allergic to gluten um, may have a skin irritation on contact, that I don't know about, but um, it does say gluten-free, phthalate-free, and propylene glycol-free. So, good to know. Um, thoroughly, not thoroughly, but um, for the most part, it seems like it's a, a safe product, safe to use on hair. So those of you who do color their hair, this might be a good solution for you. So just putting it out there. Okay, so moving on to skincare. So as I said, most of the skincare advice that I follow is from um, another YouTuber whose channel name is Dr. Dre. She's a, a licensed dermatologist and I am a super stan of this woman. I love what she's doing for the science community, being, um, you know, promoting health promotion and, and um, 
giving individuals access to information that they perhaps otherwise wouldn't have access to based on their backgrounds, you know, education, everything. Meaning like, you know, even me, I, right now I'm in graduate school for epidemiology and biostatistics, but there's a lot that I did not know about the skin and, and different ingredients that can affect your skin and stuff. So um, finding her, it was just the best thing ever. She is truly a gem of YouTube. So if you are not following Dr. Dre, please go do so. Um, like I said, most of the advice or that I follow is from Dr. Dre and a lot of the products that I'm going to be showing you right now regarding my skincare were suggested by Dr. Dre. So um, just going into like uh, face uh, cleansing, the face cleanser that I use is the Cetaphil cleanser. I'm sure you guys have heard millions of things, um, positive reviews about Cetaphil and their different um, formulations of facial cleansers. I have this one as well as the sensitive skin cleanser. I like them both. However, if I am wearing like a, a mascara or something that is a little bit more like um, hard to get off, I will use this one as opposed to the, to the sensitive skin one. So that's a great one. Um, so going into, okay, so here's something. The two most important products that anybody, I guess, should have in their arsenal is a sunscreen and a moisturizer. The sunscreen for the day and the moisturizer primarily for the night. Um, don't quote me on this, but I believe that UVA and UVB rays can still cut through clouds. So although like I live in California and there's a lot of sun, even when it's cloudy, those rays can come through the clouds and can still cause damage to the skin. Therefore, it is vital to wear a sunscreen every single day. So, without further ado, I will share with you. Okay, once again, for some reason, my phone is giving me issues today. However, so going back into the importance of sunscreen and selecting products that are the purest, simplest ingredients that will not affect your skin. As far as sunblocks are concerned, this is by far the best sunscreen I've ever used on my face. Um, it doesn't leave, I mean, it does leave a tiny, tiny bit of a white cast, but nothing that, you know, if you wear makeup can definitely cover, or even if you just use a CC cream or a BB cream, um, that, that would totally work as well uh, to cover up that cast. Right now, I'm actually wearing this. That's all I'm wearing on my face. I don't have any foundation on right now, just mascara. So, um, I truly recommend it. Um, it makes your skin feel like... I don't know, just smooth and moisturized and doesn't leave like an overly greasy feeling like some sunblock, facial sunblocks can do. This one is um, Pure and Simple by Copper Tone. It has SPF 50, it's hypoallergenic and fragrance free, has no PABA, parabens, phthalate, I don't know, phthalates, phthalates? Fragrances, dyes, or oxybenzone. So this is a mineral, um, sunscreen which contain the active ingredient is zinc oxide and I guess the cool thing about mineral sunblocks is that they do not deter deteriorate as soon as you go outside so with any other like of the chemical fourth attempt to try to get this thing to work okay moving on so what I was basically trying to say was that mineral based sunscreens are actually better for you I say that my opinion is that they're better because um, they do not deteriorate as soon as you step out of your house, building, or whatever. Once you step out into the sun, those chemical-based sunscreens will break down, like, almost automatically. So, um, choosing a sunscreen that is maybe zinc oxide-based, or I don't know if there's any other mineral-based type of sunscreens out there, but make sure that you get a mineralized, a mineral-based one, and that it is fragrance-free, Okay. So, um, going on to moisturizing, so I, she recommends like ceramide based moisturizers a lot, so I figured that why not, I believe that ceramides are actually naturally occurring in our body, I don't know the details and the chemistry and the biology behind all that, but all I know is that ceramides are already, I guess, in our body, and so um, using a moisturizer that is, you know, can permeate the skin and, and basically improve the barrier of our skin, I guess that's what the ceramide does, it helps to improve the barrier of our skin and keep it moisturized, like, kind of like more naturally, I guess. So, um, I have the Equate um, Ceramide Moisturizer facial lotion for PM and I use this at nighttime since I use the sunscreen 
every day um, during the day. So I really, really, really like it. Days that I don't go out at all, I will use this as a moisturizer all day, like from the beginning, from the morning to night. And um, it's really amazing because it doesn't feel like it stays on your skin. It actually feels like it absorbs over time. So when I have left it at night, you know, sometimes like when you use a night cream, I don't know, I get really oily in my nose area, so I'll notice that automatically in the morning it's like, oh, lots of grease, like, you know, lots of oil right here accumulated. But with this moisturizer, it does not do that. And I believe, like, the max this cost is, like, 7 bucks, and that's here in Cali, okay? So, um, really reasonably priced, pretty much the same ingredients that you'll get in some of these bougie skin creams, so... Definitely want to save your coin and go with an alternative version, a generic version that will most likely have the same exact ingredients and concentrations. So um, going on to body moisturizers, what I keep in my shower, um, she also recommends that we uh, use a moisturizer or a lotion right after we get out of the shower. So before you dry yourself off with a towel, Put your lotion on. I guess the water mixed with the lotion somehow um, allows the lotion to permeate the skin layers better, allowing for like better moisture permeation. I have no idea, but that's that's what she says. So I follow her advice, and I actually just purchased the Curel. I mean, it's the Itch Defense, and I like this one because it had like some of the ingredients that she had mentioned that she liked. So I was like, oh. Boom, there we go. It's got it in it. I'm buying it. And there's no fragrance. It's for sensitive skin. It can be used for um, people with eczema. It's got the eczema seal of approval on it from the National Eczema Association. Um, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, it's dermatologist recommended. So why not? You can't go wrong. So, so far, I really liked it. Um, it also is sort of similar to the ceramide product in that uh, I feel that it doesn't like leave a layer of residue on my skin. It like fully absorbs. So that I really love. Um, and then just one of my own tidbits, my own um, products that I've been experimenting with over the last few months actually since I was like in school and everything I discovered hemp seed oil for just general use first I tried it on my hair and what I noticed about like hemp seed oil on the hair is that it does not feel greasy like other oils like coconut oil like pretty much any oil that you put on your hair will make will give it that greasy feeling like oh okay they didn't wash their hair in however many days right it like oh it looks greasy so most people will steer away from oils for that reason. But what I noticed is that when I was using this consistently, just on my hair shop, I wasn't using it on my scalp. Although you can use it on your scalp, and I'm sure that it probably would be beneficial. Um, it left my hair really shiny, but it also just, it absorbed, it felt like it absorbed into my hair. and did not leave a residue, like almost every other oil I've ever used. Um, another thing, like when I've used it on my face, I use it sometimes um, under my makeup as a base, and I've also used it um, just like as a like a night treatment, like a night cream. So I've found that it was extremely effective in that way. So if you are curious about hemp seed oil and want to try, it if you are don't, if you are not allergic, um, I would definitely consult with your dermatologist to make sure that it's okay for you. But um, I went ahead and picked this up at the Sprouts that's down the street for me, and I absolutely love it. I got mine on sale at the time. It was like maybe five bucks, but now I believe it's like eight bucks. So they come in these little bottles, and they still last a while, so I consider investing and just trying it out. And let me know what you think, and... If you try any of the products that I have discussed today, please leave your um, comments down in the description box. Sorry, I am trying to preserve the battery of my phone. Um, it's like about to die again. So yeah, I'm the worst at charging my phone. So let's just say that. And I have like no memory on my phone either. So that's also another issue with today's technology, our little technical difficulties. So thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for watching this video. 
Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you are not already. And I will continue to do my best to provide the best content that I can. Um, I'm constantly learning every day about you know new products. So if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. I will do my best, like I said, to try to review them and get to them. And if you guys do comment, I will make sure to respond to your comments. So make sure that you go ahead and do that. So. Um, once again, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.